supposed to have a delivery for Rockwall today before 12 o'clock. You're joking. Oh, well, I'll, I'll have to send someone to collect it because we, we've got four guys on site and we need that here. Yeah, no, uh, it is what it is. Thank you, bye. I'm not doing that again. No, no, that's fine. It's okay. Welcome back to another episode of Ohms Under The Hammer. I haven't posted a video for seven months. This project's been put on hold for five months whilst we undertook two other refurbishments which were, which were done pretty quickly and, and put on the market for sale. Uh, this particular project here is an eight bedroom HMO. Uh, the time that we've had to not work here has been impacted mainly by COVID-19. Um, also, we've had massive issues in getting uh, materials, which we've overcome. Uh, in today's video, I'd like to take a, a deep dive and look into um, the technicalities of soundproofing and insulation, uh, which is a big part in doing uh, large HMO projects like this. This is a form of small scale property development. I'd like to take you and have a look all around the exterior of the property, and then we'll have a look all through the interior of the property. So let me talk to you about the exterior of the property first. So as you can see from behind me, the windows have all been installed. These are standard uh, double glazing windows in anthracite grey. Um, the roof, all the tiling on the roof has been done. In the last video we talked about how we were going to attempt to tackle the roofing ourselves. Uh, this is the first time we've, we've laid tiles ourselves. Uh, it was a big challenge for us but we, we did a really good job and very happy with the way that it looks. That's an interlocking tile up there and we used a uh, dry fix system uh, to get all of the important areas where you're most likely to get uh, compromised roofs in the future. So very happy with the way it looks. Uh, it's a grey to match the windows and that is now fully watertight. We've got a flat roof area on the top which we did in fiberglass. Let me show you around the back so you can see the progress around there. So the building has been constructed out of block with a 100 mil cavity in between, so two blocks, 100 mil cavity with insulation and we've rendered the, the exterior of the building. Now we've rendered it in a system called K-Render which I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of. Uh, the K-Render is a waterproof system and it's permeable and the benefits of using a system like this is it um, helps with humidity and it allows the building to essentially breathe a little bit better. Um, it also gives a really good finish so I'm not sure if you can see that but it's got kind of a, a textured finish to it uh, and it really stands out from other properties. So as you can see from behind me all of the windows are uh, installed at the back of the property as well and we've got a nice set of patio doors uh, over there which leads out into the, from the kitchen area. You've got some electric cables at the rear of the property which are going to provide some outside lighting. We're still to finish the flat roof area, that needs a little soffit and some guttering fitted over there. We've got all our CCTV up and guttering fitted at the rear of the property. What we also uh, constructed which wasn't visible in the last video is a little bit of an outbuilding which is just over here. Now the purpose of this outbuilding is that it will allow some um, essentially some home working space for the tenants that will be living in the property. Um, with all the changes that have happened, we, lots of people are working from home more, so we decided that we'll build a little outbuilding, have some desks in there, high speed internet, um, and therefore people can take themselves away and have a little bit of a, a working session. It's also got a partition section in there which houses um, the boilers and the cylinders which are actually heating all of the bar all of the radiator central heating system and providing the water for all of the bathrooms and showers in the property. So if you just follow me on inside and we'll uh, have a little look round. So let me now show you inside the property and you can see exactly what we're getting on with. We're very much in the first fix electrics, first, first fix plumbing uh, and partitioning stage. We've tackled quite a lot of the soundproofing, which I'd like to show you. But before I do that, just to give a bit of a recap for anyone who hasn't watched my previous videos, 
the existing uh, floor plan on this building when we purchased it was 73 square meters and we've added an additional 83 square meters in the form of a wraparound uh, part double story part single story extension and we've gone for full planning we've changed the property into a sui generis eight bedroom seven bathroom hmo house in multiple occupation and, and it will be let to professional people and it should hopefully create a really nice space for people to uh, live and have cheap affordable rent so come and follow me through and i'll show you some of the works so if you follow me on in here this is first bedroom uh, as you can see we are uh, plasterboarded we've got a stud partition here built for an ensuite now this particular ensuite will have a bi-folding door because we don't have huge room we don't want to take up a lot of room in, uh, with the door swinging into the room or into the ensuite we decided to put a little bending bifold door which will enable you to get into the room and obviously it will have a little shower toilet and a sink and a nice mirror um, you can see there in the corner we've got the soil stack which is actually uh, running all the way upstairs to support another ensuite as well. Uh, in terms of the ceiling, that's all plasterboarded. That's a double plasterboard. Uh, it's a sound board. And we've also got uh, an isomass system, which basically ha is a resilient bar and, and it stops the uh, impact and airborne noise from traveling from this floor to the floor above, which is part of the requirements when building such a large HMO. So let me show you some of the other rooms. This is another bedroom. There'll be a fire door here, taking you on in. You've got an ensuite there that we've constructed. Um, again, fully going to be soundproofed in here. You've got two skins of plasterboard on the top. Um, electrics has all been uh, run already, and we've got a, a fire alarm system that's being run throughout the whole property as well. So yeah, just a quick look at this room. Follow me on through. So there are four bedrooms on the downstairs floor, four bedrooms on the uh, first floor. So over here we're going to have, uh, this will be a door into um, a little room which will have two washing machines in there. I think I showed that in my last video but you can see how it's been constructed now. Then if you come on through here you've got um, hallway, again all sound, sound boarded with a proper system. Um, and then these are the two smallest bedrooms in the property and they actually have a shared bathroom. So you've got small bedroom there, small bedroom there and then a little bathroom. So you have a bit full of junk at the moment but uh, using this room as a bit of storage, fire alarm cable. We're having a grade A fire alarm system in the property um, just because of the amount of people that we live in here, we, we're going a little bit above and beyond. That's the bathroom. Um, yeah, small but still good size. And then another bedroom here as well. We were going to put a spotlight throughout the whole property actually and had a bit of a dilemma on this because um, obviously spotlights we think look better than just having a single light in the middle of the room. The problem with that though is where you pierce a hole for the spotlight in the plasterboard you're actually potentially letting sound go to the next floor above. So that become uh, something that we were conscious of not passing our sound test or potentially affecting our sound test from doing that. We decided to just go for a single light in the middle of every room but put something a little bit nicer and then put some other lighting in the room like lamps and things to make it look a bit better. But we've got a radiator on the wall here as well. Still early days in terms of the central heating system but yeah we're making really good progress. Let's have a look at the kitchen and then we go on upstairs. Right, so kitchen slash dining room area. Kitchen's all over there, island in the middle. Two of everything, like I said before. Um, you've got uh, an induction uh, fan which is going directly above the cooking area. There's ducting to outside air. You can see in the corner there, we've got pipe work all coming down which will be boxed in. This will have a, a wooden floor laid throughout. And then over in this section over here, we're gonna have a bit of a kind of relaxed, chill out area. So it'll be a television on the wall, um, dining table slash bit of a kind of a built round seating area. So a really good space. And um, given that there's eight people, we didn't wanna make it too cramped. So you've got the big open plan kitchen dining area. Yeah, let's go on upstairs and have a little look. So 
we're going to change this staircase. It's kind of uneconomical to repair it really, so we're just going to whip it out, put another one in. That won't cost too much money. So, conscious of not having too many people in the same room, but if you have a look in here, you've got a uh, partition there. We're very much in the midst of doing the first fixed plumbing. You've got some central heating pipes down in the corner, soil stack which runs all the way down. Um, we haven't plasterboarded any of this room just yet, but yeah, we're, we're in the midst of doing that at the moment. Everything's been taken back to brick, as we said as well. Fire alarms in, load of insulation up there in the loft, which is gonna go in the floor to again insulate and help with the sound uh, and everything else. So yeah, follow me on over here. Let's just turn that off, come through here. So, uh, another bedroom. All the bedrooms upstairs have en suites, um, whereas downstairs we have one that has the shared bathroom. And the en suites are actually really good size up here. So smaller bedroom, you've got kind of a section over there that we're going to build a bit of a, a, a wardrobe in. And then this is the en suite, which as you can see uh, is a really, really good size. What we've done to make things simpler for ourselves is we've got a stack of plasterboard in each room. And that's basically the plasterboard we're going to use to do this room. Uh, fire alarm cable has been run in, in all, all of the rooms, so that's, that's all there. And we've got a, a guy we, we use for the fire alarms who's going to come in and do the, the second fix uh, installation of the panel. So another bedroom. This is the biggest bedroom uh, in the property. So really large bedroom, nice set of windows out. And then you've got a really big ensuite as well. Almost two big actually. So in here we've got uh, you can see the size of the shower tray on the floor, it's gonna be absolutely massive. We could have had a bath and a shower in here really, but wanted to keep things simple. You can see there's a lot of first fix plumbing. You've got the trap for the shower, uh, hot, hot and cold for, for the shower as well. So yeah, good size room. Um, this room should hopefully achieve the most rent in the property, but you, you can see we've got a lot more plasterboarding and um, soundproof and everything else to do. So let's have a look at the final bedroom. Or, yeah, final bedroom on the other side there, so you can see that. Just around here. Right, so bathroom. So the door to this bedroom will be here. So the door was gonna be here, but we decided actually it's quite a nice little space. So we've changed the door to here to enter. You've got the bathroom straight in front of you. Uh, you can see all our markings on the floor so we know where everything is, traps there. Um, we've got special flooring that goes down that's actually got soundproofing in it as well. Um, just to make sure, as I said before, that we definitely pass the impact and airborne sound test. We're just making sure we're doing everything properly. Um, nice little window out on that one to, for, for the ensuite. Every room that we've got an ensuite where we don't have a window, we're basically putting in a little induction um, induction fan which is ducted to outside air so that we can make sure that there's not too much kind of steam and um, damp getting ha happening in all the bathrooms. So yeah, final bedroom, but still a really good size. Okay, we need to um, sort out the airborne sound uh, and the way we will do that is literally by staggering the studs as you can see they're completely separate separated by having a six by two top um plate and header and then your um, plasterboard is then applied to each of the studs complete ca completely keeping it separate and the plasterboard that we use on each side is a 15 mil um db board which is adequate to uh, comply Right, just a word of warning, if you're going to be putting any holes into a, um, a, um, a soundproofing wall like this, if you're going to put a socket on the opposite side, do not be using a socket, a double-sided socket on this side, use it somewhere else, otherwise you'll have sound coming through both sockets. Okay, the second type of soundproofing system we've chosen to go for is the Isomass system really really neat stuff here this is really good stuff um not cheap but it's gonna do the job properly so you've got a, a block and a bar this is a bit of rubber um, the bar goes into the into the rubber like so and there's your resilience there's your bar and this is what cushions the impact sound okay so that literally goes if you can you pan on that that actually goes on there like so and then you've got two sets of plasterboards 
which um, screw only into the bar, not to the rubber. There's your resilience. And then you have your fur in between, which completely isolates the sound for upstairs to downstairs. That's our second soundproofing system. Okay, so the third system we're using is slightly different from the um, this type of system, the isomass system. This is more of a just a, a resilient uh, bar going across, and we've improvised uh, improvised by using uh, a slight thin piece of rubber in between. Uh, you've got your insulation, as you can see up here. Got that, and then you've got the two plaster boards, which uh, is on one side, and then a dot and dab on the other which creates your soundproofing basically. Okay, I'm in the middle of doing um, the first fix electrics for this property and we have chosen to go for individual consumer boards. They're little two-way consumer boards um, for the purpose of uh, isolating each room uh, as and when we need to. So if a, a particular tenant has a problem in their room, we can isolate uh, the electrics and work on that thus not uh, bothering any of the other tenants. And all these cables go back to a comms room which I built over in the middle of the house. Yeah, this is acoustic sealant, um, fire rated for four hours protection apparently. Um, we're using it on every wall that's got DB board basically to um, seal all the gaps. So first coat goes on, gets sealed, and then as you can see, if I just point you up there, um, the second coat goes on and sealant again on every gap. We've used 75 tubes so far and I reckon we're going to need another 50 to do this job, but it will work. This is great stuff. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, hit the thumbs up, click the subscribe button and you can also hit the bell icon and you'll be notified every time I upload.